Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Anu Chakrapani. I'm a guest columnist for India Currents, which is a nonprofit uh, online magazine uh, for the Indian American community here in the US. Uh, it is my pleasure to have uh, in front of me today online um, uh, the legendary duo, sister duo of Carnatic music, uh, Vidushi Ranjani and Vidushi Gayatri. They are here in the US on a month long trip. Uh, they've done a couple of concerts already. They will be uh, uh, heading out to different places in the US. Um, so it's my pleasure to speak to them today. Um, this will also be uh, printed in uh, the um, India Currents magazine for those who would like to get a, um, a printable version of this uh, interview. So thank you, Madam Rajini, Madam Gayatri. Thank you, Anuj. Namaste, and it's so delighted to be part of this interview. Thank you, dear Anuj, and also thank you, viewers. It's and for India Currents for uh, running this story. Um, it's a pleasure to be part of this. Absolutely. Thank you so much. So um, I want to start off um, with the two of you asking you how you have kind of mastered the art of putting together the perfect performance, right? So there have been, there have been, there are great artists, Who've, who have exceptional talent, um, but uh, yours kind of stands out as performances that combine all of the elements of uh, bhakti, you know, bringing your creativity, um, kind of bringing out the beauty of the composition, the writer uh, of the song, uh, the way you kind of incorporate uh, abhangas in your performance, um, you know, and even kind of weaving a nice jugalbandi between the two of you. Also, um, you know, giving your fellow artists on stage uh, the space to kind of bring out the best as well. So yours is kind of almost like the complete performance because it caters to the young and to the old. Those who are purists who have been, you know, well-versed to the music for hundreds of years, 50, 60 years, and also with uh, junior artists or people who are just not even familiar with Carnatic music. Those who are just attending a concert for the first time it kind of touches touches a chord uh, with them. So can you tell us how this evolution of the perfect, you know, raga performance has come to be? What a lovely question. And thank you for all your compliments. Yes. Uh, I, I think that when you love something that you do and that passion, it just comes through. Uh, so uh, also the whole you know, the experience of singing with Gayatri in tandem to enjoy the, uh, her music. Uh, it's something uh, <laughs> wonderful uh, for me as uh, I, I get the best seat in the audience oh. uh, next to her <laughs> and I get to listen and uh, really experience the <clears throat> beauty. So it's a great thing for me. I'm enjoying every minute of it. Yeah, like... Um... I don't want this to degenerate into a mutual admiration society. <laughs> you have to. I, mean, you I have think to. at the very core of our partnership is that uh, unconditional love and being having each other's back. You want your partner to, to shine the best. And I think that is one of the key aspects in, a, you know, in two people being together, doing whatever they do, that you must want the best for each other. So I think in any duo or in any group, that has to be there. Uh, to give uh, a performance which uh, which gives your best and um, I think uh, that is kind of it's not you know you're not putting it out there but people can see it yes when, when you celebrate and also, that and also it is like you put music on a pedestal the, there is yeah. something that is created in in that space which is far higher than what you are as yeah. an individual as an artist so it is not only with Gayatri I also enjoy the moment with the team of musicians that day it's something very, very precious to us. So when you talk of a performance, basically it's your entire uh, decades of sadhana, of learning, of practice condensed into those two or three hours. Mm -hmm. so, um, it, so how effectively you draw from that and let that the best of it reflect in those uh, few hours of performance. So we have definitely learned and uh, uh, thought about it over the a few years. Uh, our father was a huge uh, source. He mentored us, uh, I think, through these uh, aspects. Uh, because, you know, uh, the, the thing is that the Carnatic music is so complex. It's, it's, it's so huge. Uh, 
so it's very easy to get caught up into uh, or be self indulgent when it comes to uh, essaying an alapana or getting and getting drawn and go on and on with it so i think one of the key factors in uh, being able to uh, give a very gripping recital which holds the attention is to be to is to walk that thin line wow. between creativity and and you know what uh, connecting it with the audience uh, how do you do it without sacrificing the your creativity or uh, the the great values of the system the depth but you make you connect that to the audience make it appealing uh, without having to compromise on either so that balance has been quite a journey for us and we every concert we we are trying to maintain that that fine balance between the both of course there's a lot of aspects into it but i think with creative people with extremely talented people the one danger is uh, the talent and expression can be very self self indulgent you can go on and on with your alapana so i think uh, to kind at of at one point we have to tell ourselves that it's not just about <clears throat> us as an artist it is about the music and how best we can be a medium to give our not only our best also to uh, reflect the best that the system can correct uh, <clears throat> provide us with so i think whether it is alapana or a composition or abhanga <laughs> like you said or it's a, like a jugalbandi exchange you just let that emotional force inside you that that energy inside you shine through the music and i think it doesn't matter then the audience will get it so yeah it's been a journey but sometimes i think uh, you basically you have to open yourself up to grace and the burden of all your academic achievements you know that you know so much you have to let it rest very lightly on your shoulders mm -hmm. and open yourself up to grace because you're an empty vessel at that point and if you are able to do that at that moment of performance i think music happens naturally wonderful. wonderfully said i think it's a lesson for all aspects of life also like they say when a when a cricketer retires or a sportsman retires they say the game is bigger than anything else adhe mari than it's the same thing you know music is bigger than anything else and uh, i do have to point out one fanboy observation or moment uh, i mean comment um you know the way the two of you appreciate each other that also blends so well you know it's like <laughs> the way you say uh you know appreciate each other it's like it's like part of the song itself it doesn't stand out like something it's not distracting or anything so we enjoy that as well not just every note in your song but even the appreciation you do for each other but i do want to kind of segue you you were mentioning how this has been a journey um i want to kind of flash back to uh, late 90s i guess mid early uh, mid to late 90s when you were kind of uh, becoming popular Uh, among the karnat core karnatic circles if you will uh, people were noticing you they were kind of seeing you as rising stars and uh, then i've read an article i don't know you should probably tell i don't know if it's an urban legend or a real thing but <laughs> uh, we heard that uh, i read that um, there was a concert in ttd uh, tinagar that was supposed to be done by a senior artist and then that person fell ill and so you got the opportunity and then that was it that was the turning point uh, everybody started noticing you were all over in the papers and things like that is that true you know uh, can you walk yeah. us through that day if it was uh, <laughs> or whatever that turning point was can you walk us through that day or that week how it unfolded malarum ninaivugal kind of thing no <laughs> okay yeah you are absolutely right uh, actually a very senior uh, artist was to sing that day but two days before the performance she she had to call off her uh, concert because of health reasons and uh, we were asked to sing in her place um so everybody knew it was us because it was publicized as ranjini gayatri concert it, uh, it was all around it was known as, i mean it was publicized as ranjini gayatri not as any other musician okay. so that day um, till then we have always thought that we were violinist first especially gayatri has always considered herself a violin player first and then also singing like that so yeah. till that point <clears throat> we have been very uh, not very uh, comfortable in our shoes as uh, vocalists um but that day i don't know what happened but uh, the crowd uh, was was a lot i mean i don't it was very overwhelming you know because mm -hmm. ttd uh, in those days did not have a air condition in place so yeah. it had open windows and doors all all around us 
and uh, you know we were by no means crowd pullers because we had just started and people did come initially for curiosity and then you have to find your own uh, strength and people will then after that the music has to sustain you so at that point uh, i mean people were hanging out of windows uh, yeah outside was, the whole courtyard was packed with people outside the hall i mean we I have, have never seen such crowd yeah, ever I mean, before in all our years of playing as accompanists for you know other vocalists and uh, popular, popular stars we have not seen such a turnout so it was uh, staggering and we didn't know how it happened that day 10 days before this concert or maybe 2 weeks at the, at the most no no actually a week before this concert we had sung in bharati vidya bhavan on new year's day this concert was on 5th so 4 days actually so 99 january 1st we sang in bharati vidya bhavan and there were uh, as the curtains went up there were 10 people in the audience <laughs> and of course the crowd came in after that after eventually that. Uh, there yeah. was a sizable crowd but but, were, uh, but when the crowd went up there were literally we could count the number of people and then just a few days later we had this and that day there was a shift inside of me i felt it um that day i stopped being apologetic about myself and there was something that happened and the way with abandon we sang and the sankati everything just fell into place mm. and, and people in the front i still remember <laughs> those you know it's like a picture in your head that yeah. people were shedding tears uh, sitting wow. in the front people were uh, sitting on the floor yeah. also it was till that brim till the dais brim. people were sitting and yeah. uh, and i remember uh, you know some people saying if we party now what is the chance for other vocalists if you sing like this because you know until then we were just violinists who were just you know dabbling in that but i think that concert really changed more than you know being in the papers and getting all that something shifted within us and uh, i think that is what you know that change happened within us and we we realized what we could do and i think there was no looking back and i think the change has to happen inside of everyone and that happened that day so it's very special for me maybe it was uh, balaji's will that this is uh, what we were meant for though it took me quite a few years to come to terms with that <laughs> so it truly was a turning point then yeah sure yes. excellent yeah. so i wish there would have been fans that day who probably said say now i was there that day <laughs> during that concert <laughs> yeah. thing okay so um a kind of related but open ended question since you mentioned we just spoke about your kind of an impo- impactful performance uh, of yours that kind of changed the course of your career um on behalf of young artists i'd like i'm just curious and i'd like to know unlike other fields like any other any other kind of art or i wish i shouldn't say any other kind of art some arts science engineering finance any of these you know uh, fields where people get go go to a school earn a degree and then you're told on one day hey you're ready to enter the workforce and then then your life changes from that point of view so it's kind of almost discreet right so yeah. unlike that with music and especially something like as deep as carnatic music how does anyone how does any young artist know that they are ready for the big occasion let's say they they have performed in smaller circles they've performed on the stage in you know small venues and things like that but they haven't really done a sabha performance so how how do how do they know that they're ready for that big stage you know you know what is your that's a, that's a wonderful question thank you for asking here as you have rightly put there is no discrete timeline uh, just like okay we lovingly plant uh, say a rose bush right. plant that give them you know all the required nutrition water it but can you ever predict when that plant will start budding we can't i mean it will grow but we don't know when the flower will come out so the same way or for that matter if it's a mango tree when the the first mango is going to be it when it is going to bear fruits so it is definite it is very subjective and uh, uh, we started performing uh, within 3 uh, and a half years of training in violin so each one has have their own trajectory and their own journey uh, growth chart usually it happens in you know very small you know very organic way I, that i should appreciate the way you know the carnatic music field is mm. it, you know it never starts like this grand premiere Yeah. it starts like that it starts with small group competitions small performances in your local temple or in a small sabha in a chamber so this is how the first opportunities usually come 
and then you learn you make mistakes then your audience will tell you how to improve so that that closely knit uh, circle of brasicas i think they are the ones who really uh, help the musician figure out what they have to work on and i think that is why this uh, it is still thriving the carnatic kacheri is thriving because of these rasikas and when you are ready and when the music reaches a certain standard the word of mouth works beautifully sure. so i think uh, that's how it is and it's not like a grand premiere in the biggest music hall it just starts with these little little concerts and you, organically it moves it up it grows up. and if you are really good the quality speaks for itself it generally you know the sabhas and the rasikas will will kind of right. that's how it is meant to be at least it, that's how it was in our case <laughs> yeah. that's wonderful you mentioned about having feed uh, kind of getting feedback from the audience and kind of improvising i want to ask you you've mentioned two of your critics fiercest critics for your dad and your guru uh, so um tell us about something you know some piece of advice that they have given um which you think of even today you know you're at the pinnacle of your careers you're at the top of the game but something that one or two things that you recollect even today you know i need to pay attention to that which my dad said or my guru psn sir said you know yeah well my father has been our uh, worst critic so to speak uh, our gurus have been very liberal these, yeah yeah very very uh, loving and uh, supportive. supportive of in us in fact we used to <coughs> tell him that uh, am i okay am i making these mistakes you know is there something wrong and i remember psn sir because we had these self doubts when we started singing sir is it sounding too much like the violin is there an instrumental style in our singing because we were very <clears throat> wary of that because we didn't want to right you know vocalize an instrumental style and he used to say that all of this is in your head mm-hmm. it's nothing like that you're doing just okay stop asking these questions and just go sing and uh, my other guru my my violin teacher ts krishna swami sir appa tekel that's what you know so i saw somehow i think it was appa who was uh, my father who was the 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 most vocal critic uh, and who kept us very grounded and uh, the nose to the grindstone the gurus kind of stepped back and let appa do the work in that department of course yeah. we learned other things <laughs> so so coming to your question of what is that one piece of advice that we still follow till date it would be you know that uh, attention to proportion the right proportion never to overindulge never to you know in the name of <coughs> freedom yeah. freedom of expression not to just indulge <coughs> yourself and go into a path into your own journey but to be grounded to to make sure that it is an all round presentation uh, presentation so it's it's it, there's a very beautiful word for it in tamil it's called alav so most senior musicians would always uh, use this word alav you know in the alav ka padnu no keeping your alapana at the right proportion the swara every part of creativity and how best to combine compositions with manodharma and to give everything the right proportion you know it's all part of delivering a gripping concert experience so i think that because i remember a a concert in which i sang natakurunji i think it was in probably more than 20 20 years 22 years ago uh, we were singing a concert in <clears throat> shastri hall which is a very iconic uh, venue for concerts in chennai and my guru psn sir had come for that and i sang a very very extended natakurunji because i was in a mood that day And so i remember him telling me that he must have day, sung it for around half an hour <coughs> yes he said ra- alapana <laughs> yeah he said that um, you have such a facile voice that it it just obeys everything that your mind says and you have a fertile imagination too but uh, you know if you ellathu ni ore ore title koti uti na if you just spill everything that you have what will you keep for your next concert so don't draw out so much just give it in pockets so that then people will say oh this is her natakurunji what is new so always leave them asking for more and this is something that our father also reiterated so if that's one advice that i would always say that um of course be natural be evocative be expressive but always end it when the audience wants more wow. so this goes for everything that we sing that's wonderfully said thank you so much yeah so speaking of gurus you spoke a little bit about your gurus but you are gurus yourself to several artists so um lot of them up and coming artists were performing in the big stage so what is your advice to people who are starting their coaching careers who are wanting to become gurus or starting off becoming gurus what's your advice for them 
See, uh, we have never actually advised uh, our uh, students who themselves teach uh, as to how to teach, because this is also a very organic thing. We, after all, share what we have experienced, what we have learned, what we do. That's that's the only thing that we can share. So <clears throat> it's very uh, organic. So uh, it will happen in due course as you learn, depending on your uh, ability. But one thing is very important that, of course, in the course of training, we always teach, end up teaching a lot of compositions of different composers, trinities, uh, Tamil compositions, Kannada, Purandardasa, and so on. But nevertheless, the one thing that we should remember while teaching is to focus on the fundamentals. How do we if, uh, pay attention to the instrument, the tonality of the instrument, whatever it is, vocal in this case, it can be any instrument of the choice. So <clears throat> how do we improve the tonality Mm -hmm. to make it very engaging and also to focus on <clears throat> voice the fun yeah voice health and, and the fundamentals the swara the laya the shruti all that right. right so you can pick up a new composition at any time mm -hmm. but if you go wrong in vocal vocalization in articulation this is something that impacts your entire career and your entire uh, you know, lifespan in 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 singing so i think uh, we've all for us the goal has to be to for the students to you know, get the right vocal technique. And of course, like you said, fundamentals. Right. And when we are teaching, of course, it's it's not your time to, you know, show off your progress in the raga if you're teaching an alapna. It's to draw the student and to nudge them into, you know, singing. So you have to play a different role. There. Yes. Right. So um, I, I want to <laughs> kind of shift bases a little bit and talk about some of the devotional albums you've started, you know, doing recently, right? The... Lalita Sahasranamastotram and Pandurakshaka and things like that. So can you tell us a little bit about any memorable experiences uh, from having done these recently? Well, all this, all, the whole uh, devotional uh, work of ours started with uh, uh, a tribute to our, in the, the memory of my mother-in-law. She all, always used to insist that there is no good recording of Lalita Sasnamam. She used to tell us that yeah. uh, there are a lot of uh, problems with enunciation or the way it was uh, expressed. And she would say, She used to keep telling us this, but then we thought it was not our cup of tea or that yeah. was not our focus. Our focus was on classical music and not on the devotional. So we always put uh, procrastinated doing it. Yeah. But nevertheless, at this time, we thought that uh, as a tribute to, to the memory of my when mother, she passed we should away, do it. We felt that, you know, this was something that we never fulfilled her desire that we should do Lalita Sahasrama. So, so in her it. memory, we thought that we, we actually, it was started as a practice we used to meet every day and you know the pandemic we Actually, had time yeah so we used to meet every day and then it just some things just happened they're meant to be so my neighbor was a you know she was a she used to chant this every day and she was uh, so she was the one so we used to sit with her and chant this every day and that's how it started and we went to the studio without without any idea on how we would release it or anything we just went and recorded and the recording also was so smooth. We finished the entire chant in, in a few in a couple of hours. Yes. Oh. So it was done seamlessly. So only taking breaks when the voice becomes dry. Mm -hmm. So so I think it was one of the quickest recordings that we have done. And uh, and you know, we also just quietly released on our it was absolutely not promoted. Uh, but I think it has resonated very well and uh, we never expected yeah. that kind of a response. So that kind of fostered its own. So we brought out some more. Right. So Bujangam was again in our mother's memory. Mm. So she, she used to chant it every day, the Subramanya Bujangam. So uh, in her memory, we, we thought we should bring this out. Uh, and so, so yeah. we composed, uh, tuned these verses and presented it. That also has got a lot of traction and people love it. In fact, even in this tour, people came up to us. So many people came up to us and said yeah, that Boston, I love yeah. your Subramanya Pujanga. So it's been a very nice uh, <laughs> uh, departure from our usual, uh, uh, you know, concert routine to, to yeah, soak absolutely. in the verses. It's so we wonderful. Here, right? about, yeah, Sanskrit and pronunciation about Sandhis. So it's been a very enriching and, uh, you know, a journey that we have learned a lot and I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, I can see th two things emerge. One is, you know, how you're deriving from inspiration in your personal lives, right? You're not just looking at gurus and big artists, you're 
you know, looking at your neighbors, your aunts and uncles and moms and deriving inspiration, coming up with these albums. I think it's great. And two, also your fan base is expanding, right? People who are not <laughs> familiar with classical music, they're listening to this and probably they'll get into, get drawn into your Carnatic music work as well. So that's, that's another great aspect. But speaking of, you know, um, foring into other things, um, you recently did a show uh, or a concert with, um, in tribute of uh, Ilai Raja, um, the stalwart, the dawn of uh, Indian music. It was nice to see you, legends on one side and a legend of cinema music on the other side coming together. That's very unique again. So what what inspired you to do that? You know, can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, well, we were approached to do this uh, concert uh, as a, you know, to commemorate uh, Ilya Raja sir's uh, 80th birthday celebration. Um, <clears throat> when this idea was mooted, we were thinking how to take this forward because we were hardcore classical artists and we we at no cost didn't uh, wanted to you know dilute that part of it yeah. but we also you know while you know looking into the work of Ilya Raja <laughs> sir we we, uh, we also discovered there was so much of classism in it yeah. and therefore uh, uh, we have actually highlighted the classism in these compositions and uh, put forth the classical values populated by Le Raja sir's composition. Uh, I would say that the, the formative years uh, growing up in Mumbai, we only uh, connected with uh, Carnatic music, classical music. <coughs> we have also heard, heard a lot of Hindustani. Uh, film songs were not, uh, were actively discouraged by, uh, by Appa. So when I moved to Chennai and I went to college there, that's when I discovered uh, Raja sir's music. You know, when in my I was the lone violinist in my 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 college, and we used to orchestrate. You know, many of the compositions, and we didn't have a keyboard or anything. It was just the violin and then a group of girls singing. So I I had to condense the entire. And you know, Rajasar's music is famous for the layers and the rich orchestration and the yes. background music and the interludes. Yes. So it was a challenge for me to condense all of it. You know, which uh, entire team of 50, 60 musicians have played and to just make it through the violin, you know, <laughs> to get those best aspects. And that's when I discovered the the, the greatness of his music. So I think uh, that kind of, uh, I remember that and uh, I have really loved and engaged very deeply with Rajasar's music in that phase. So I think uh, for me, it was a, a kind of a remembrance of that phase. And it was a, a very amazing process. In fact, uh, uh, the entire uh, the process of uh, how to present because you know the, uh, everyone is uh, tuned to listening to those songs the way it has been uh, presented correct correct with all those instruments and with all those BGMs so how would they <clears throat> react respond to a classical retelling representation of those those that the same songs so it was they were a little nervous because you know you can't uh, imagine. Uh, uh, Pani Viram Malarmanam or uh, Andi Mare without those background music, you know. So all this is part of the song, not just the words. <laughs> so uh, for us to actually sing those songs, but with a classical perspective, and we didn't want to do a parody where I am just uh, singing the same song with a very classical twist because that will uh, reduce to a parody aspect of, you know, music. So it has to be very authentic to what he has done. But at the same time, the classical elements and the raga uh, possibilities, creativity has to also come out. So it was a very uh, thin line that we had to walk, but we enjoyed tremendously <clears throat> the process. Yeah, we also believe, you know, we have always believed that classical music, especially South Indian classical music, has the power to engage with everybody, anybody of or through all age groups, <clears throat> languages, culture, everything. So we have always believed in that. And, and now we see it actually in action that people do enjoy listening to classical music irrespective of the age. And yeah, uh, the, totally. In fact, those that day, the concert in Chennai that happened, uh, you know, a few months ago. It was a sold out. Uh, yeah, and there are many people who are Raja Sar's fans who never entered a kachiri. Wow. And uh, there were a lot of uh, Manodharma and uh, typical kache, you know, we didn't have a keyboard or a drums or anything. It was just a Mridangam, Violin and Ghatam and Tanpura. 
the way people <laughs> loved the uh, you know the classical elements and uh, cheered for all the classical bits that was a revelation and i really enjoyed that <laughs> wonderful wonderful i wish i was in the crowd but uh, <laughs> thank you so much uh, like you said you know you um, being open to all forms of music and you being carnatic music um proponents you still respect all forms of music is wonderful to see and respecting legends and you know your legends in other forms of music is great um so I, again on a slightly different topic something that's developed recently in your um album of creations um your filming of songs in things like ganges rishikesh or someshwara temple all of those i think they 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 are taking your music to a different level you know whether it's the filming the location um the serenity of the location um you know we are able to enjoy the beauty and the grammar of the music and they are leaving kind of a lasting impression so singing a song singing a great song in a sabha is one thing but going to a certain location and especially these locations singing those songs is is it's transporting it to a different level um i know you probably tried this during the pandemic and things like that but did you expect that you know what is the kind of feedback you got did, did you expect that people will um welcome it uh, in such such you put it so beautifully uh, anuj the way you describe it you know that was the purpose of it to connect the setting you know of the place with the core of the music to celebrate because uh, the you know this land of bharat that is from where everything has you know springing from the art the music the lyrics the words the bhakti the it's language. all rooted to this yes. uh, this this punya bhumi and uh, whenever we sing you know music is not just art music it's not you can't separate it from from the context of uh, spirituality from the context of the land itself it's in the air around you and when you present it in a concert hall sometimes it's very sanitized you know it becomes a performance yeah. so we wanted to rediscover and deemphasize these roots these connections and that's why the travel log started in fact it didn't start with all these grand plans it <laughs> happened in a very spontaneous unplanned moment you know you would have seen that uh, youtube description of the same it started in a boat ride when we were on the ganges okay. going from the venue which was a very beautiful uh, ganga ghat and back we were just there and as we were just taking in the ganga we broke into song and it was captured by one of Ma the accompanying artists yeah <laughs> and you know that is how that happened and when we just shared it with rasikas the response was really so phenomenal and uh, then we realized that yes this is something that people love to connect the song with the setting and that's how the travel log started so it's just a simple effort to to connect uh this uh, land with the song and it has been such a rewarding journey like you said so many there ever. has been a lot of learning here because we have also tried to learn uh, new compositions Correct. create new yeah. work so that this link happens right so sometimes we go and source lyrics sometimes we write we get somebody to write something that is suiting the context so uh, you know in fact we started with these small small snippets of one song and now it is expanded to full length travel logs which is there on epo music the rishikesh travel logs or you know something which which really uh, it's a entire experience of that place you go to different places so it's evolved from there and uh, so i think it's just the blessings of uh, kashi and uh, vishveshwara there uh, that we we got to uh, embark on this journey correct yeah and also thank you so much for the explanation i i must point again a fanboy moment here in that in that song which you sang uh, on the ganges everything is so beautiful there is at mo at one at one moment when um when you're singing there is a ferry at behind you you know you're going to go and that's but not, even that doesn't seem like a distraction you know that's also blending so well you know like you're saying the beauty of the setting is just you know yeah, some people said it's bad 
the the sound of the motor board is like shiva's dumaru it seems <laughs> so it's like people have been really very uh, accepting you know they didn't yeah. think that it was noise in fact some people asked us are, are you sure i mean th- that you know initially when they were listening to the song they thought it was syncopated it was not natural it's a, that we were putting some we were singing in front of a screen that it's not really ganga till the moment when they saw the boat <laughs> <laughs> and then people said are you recorded it in a studio and just doing acting you know lip sync which is happening in all lot of video but the thing about these travel logs is it's not just a video shoot we are actually singing in real time and that is the whole it's point. totally can to keep it real yeah correct thank you so much um so um now you're here in the us right so we are seeing you here for the first time in 3 years i guess so yeah. would you like to give um your fans here international fans here a glimpse of what to expect of course you've already done a couple of concerts in the last few days but most of your concerts are to follow so you know what can they expect this month from you <laughs> i think it's a typical kacheri in fact uh, i think uh, mailapur is very much present in the audiences of north america here so <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for yeah thank you so much for appreciating us <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely people want 3 and 1/2 hour concerts whether or not they want 3 and 1/2 hour concerts in chennai they want it in san jose for sure <laughs> so people uh, are expecting the real uh, full fledged kacheri and uh, talking of audiences here i think the audience in bay area is probably the most loving a uh, cheerleading bunch of people <laughs> in fact every time we start a concert there are actually uh, hoots and uh, whistles and uh, it's it's very magical you know to walk into the stage and get that much of uh, love from the uh, rasikas it's a very very uh, magical experience to sing here so i don't i don't know if we can call it international audience because uh, uh, i really don't look at audiences like that we have we have, of course we've sung in many international locations yes. and, <laughs> yeah as i said i believe in the universal the universal universal yeah power of music <laughs> whether you're singing in ravenna festival in italy or dhaka bengal festival in dhaka or at the music academy or in gayana samaja in bengaluru uh, i think it is the music which leads the way and we've always kept it authentic uh, there is no concert which is crafted to suit a certain audience it's never been there in fact uh, you know in in venues like we sang in uh, bengaluru ganesh utsava this festival focuses a lot on you know the populist element as well so you have film shows you have um, people from the film fraternity singing songs so it's not a place where you uh, are generally pe- uh, classical musicians would present a very deep or uh, that kind of a concert but we sang a ragam tanam pallavi there last year and uh, and people loved it i hope they loved it no yeah, i'm sure they loved it because the organizer said that this was one of the best received mm-hmm. concerts uh, highest uh, so it's, i think we have never uh, asked ourselves what does this audience want so it is uh, you do what you do to the best of your ability and i think uh, the, the things will happen so that's what it is there's no international audience as such <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah but it's wonderful to see how much you love the love the crowds everywhere you go it's really great <laughs> okay so um we are done with all of the you know i must give you this analogy in my university exam la there are two mark questions three mark questions and four mark questions so we are done with the five mark questions okay <laughs> so we'll now do the two mark questions and there's going to be one with a twist uh it's going to be a light hearted rapid fire round you don't have to i'm not timing anything but short answers hopefully something that you enjoy answering and the viewers enjoy listening to uh i have a set of 10 questions i'm going to alternate between ranjini ma'am and gayatri ma'am so first ranjini ma'am um and if you if the other wants to chime in with something feel free to no hard and fast yeah So the first question to Ranjini ma'am what was the most um unique venue you have had a concert at well um if i have were to pick one it would be the dhaka music festival where the whole it was in a stadium and around 13000 people were listening to the concert and that was a you know that experience of 13000 people sitting around you for a classical music uh, a concert is something that is in my etched in my mind forever for me i would pick a you know when we sang a concert in a, a boat a float which went around the temple pond in tanjavur 
for wow. a Mariamman temple. It's a very iconic uh, location. For Navratri, we sang, uh, it keeps moving around the river. Uh, pond. Pond. The temple floats, so we were all in constant motion. So it was a very cool wow. idea. So we enjoyed yeah. that. You're in motion. <laughs> the lights, you know, revolving, uh, different scenes coming in front of your eyes. Yeah. It was nice. Very Sitting exciting. on a boat. Not, not get distracted if so, in such a situation. Oh, it was very, it was lovely. And you know, the audience is basically the ones who are able to accommodate it in the float. That's your audience. So it was But really... everywhere, you know, audience thronging, you know, that is the Thiruvira Kache. I mean, can imagine that. Correct, mm. correct. <clears throat> Okay, uh, second question to you, uh, Gayatri Ma. Um, what is your favorite rainy Saturday afternoon snack? Oh, chart, without a question. Bhel <laughs> puri, pani puri, I think for both of us, all those yeah, chart you, like items. You can take uh, a person out of Bombay, but you can't take the Bombay chart out of a person. <laughs> accompanied with piping hot chai. There are a lot of chart places in Bay Area. You should visit them when you're here. Okay. <laughs> will do. Third question, um, name any one soul-stirring composition that moves you every single time you listen to it. For me, it is K.V. Narayan and Swami's uh, many beautiful songs like Jagdo Dharana, Krishna Ni Begane. Uh, Vargala Varg Yeah, it's our go-to songs. Yes. Yeah. It always never fails me. to bring tears when we listen. Wow. Okay. Um, next for you, Gayatri Ma'am. Um, since you're visiting the US, any American singer or any singer from the West, you know, European or American singer whose songs are on your playlist? No, I'm so sorry. I, I come as a total uh, insulated bumpkin here, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I know that this question has inspired me to expand my playlist and I'll work on it right away. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Ranjini, ma'am, number of concerts you have done, do you have a count? Like, you know? Actually, no, but this is my 36th year of uh, both our 36th year of uh, yeah. performance on stage. So, but uh, we have not bothered keeping the numbers, I mean, or keeping track of the numbers. But one story. thing, uh, it's also a very conscious thing. It's not about statistics. You're as good as your last concert. And for me, that has been, so that's why we don't put our citations or awards on the wall as much as we can help it. Because, you know, it's about the music has to, has to be your defining the first and last thing about yourself. So I think that's a, that's a, my approach to my career as well. It. It's not about the numbers. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, it's a, this is a long question. So we are always told, you know, especially those who sing, um, you have to take care of your voice. Don't drink anything, you know, that's cold, you know, anything that affects your voice, uh, be on a strict diet regimen when traveling when meeting people, when going to parties and all that, you know, do you also have to practice that? <laughs> yeah, many things that you have said makes a lot of sense. You have to go with your voice and uh, drink a lot of water. That is definitely there. You hydrate yourself and then do that which is comfortable for your voice. For some people having ice cream, drinks, soft drinks is fine and they can still perform. Do that, no problem. But for voices which are much more sensitive than that, it's better to avoid it on a concert day. Good to know. Especially for the tots that are listening. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven, probably the most interesting one. I don't know who wants to take it. You were born and raised in Mumbai, but settled in Chennai now. So I have to ask this. If you had to pick one thing, what would it be? Sabudana Kichidi or Idli Vada Sambar? Sabudana Kichidi for me. <laughs> No I'm, questions. <laughs> I'm not a foodie, so uh, yeah, I'm. I think dosa is probably. I like uh, homemade fluffy hot idlis, not the uh, stone rubber variety that you get uh, outside. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, next question. Uh, what was the last movie you saw? You don't have to rate it. I'm not going to ask you whether you liked it or not. So no controversies. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> okay, my last movie was uh, Rocketry. Exactly. Yeah, Rocketry, same. It was an amazing, uh, incredible movie. Okay. Um, we're approaching the end of the interview. I don't know how much time we have, but uh, any film song you could uh, you could hum? Just, you know, 10 seconds, 20 seconds? Well, there are a lot of, you know, I've grown up listening to a lot of Lata Mangeshkar classics, mm -hmm. but it's this Tamil song, which I love very much. I'll just hum a few lines from it. Chittiram <laughs> Pesudadi 
எந்தன் சிந்தை மயங்குதடி சித்திரம் பேசுதடி முத்துச்சரங்களை போல் முத்துச்சரங்களை போல் மோகன புன்னகை நின்னுதடி முத்துச்சரங்களை போல் மோகன புன்னகை மின்னுதடி சித்திரம் பேசுதடி thank you so much wonderful um what's your hobby if if you're not singing what would you be doing at home reading books oh. yeah. chilling out yeah yeah we are inveterate uh, readers a uh, fiction of course oh, wow. so we read a lot so uh, i uh, that's my go to thing that when i do okay yeah. excellent so um we we have come to the end of the interview so um thank you so much for talking to us but we can't let you go without giving us a teaser any anything that you want to hum i know you just hummed a film song but anything that you would like to jointly hum you know something like a teaser for the viewers sure uh, you know as you know that we uh, the 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 indian classical world lost a great musician shri t v shankar narayan and very recently so we'll just uh, hum one of the classics from the school that he represented and that he himself sang uh, so beautifully so just a line from that song <clears throat> feel that when will we come back here again because <laughs> so here is really so addictive and it, it spoils us so i think that's really truly reflective of our frame of mind when we are when we anticipate singing here thank you so much and so do you want to tell us uh, tell all of your viewers which day you're coming where yeah so uh, um, to all of our fans in and around the bay area we are singing on september 18th sunday afternoon at uh, 4 pm sequoia sequoia oh, yeah. high school auditorium redwood city uh, what time is the concert i think 4 4 pm i think is the concert yeah. so i think it's uh, i think it's already uh, selling out very fast or already sold out uh, so I, uh, but anyway i uh, just uh, to all of you we are absolutely pumped up and looking forward to singing here after three and a half years after you know the last concert here so see you all here and namaste Namaste thank you thank so you Anjuji once again thank you so much Ranjini ji so thank you so much guys